Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Video Games, back with another cool arcade game, but this time it's actually a pinball machine. But pinball machines were part of arcades, so we figured we'd film it. That's one of the things that we, uh, that we repair and sell here. So this thing was pretty cool, so we thought we'd take a little video of it. This is Bally's Supersonic. We typically get in the older pinball machines just because uh, they're a little cheaper for the customers and we kind of like the older ones. So This came out in 1979 and I figured I'd do a quick video. We were just finishing it up. It's not completely done yet. We still got some stuff we have to do to dial it in, but it's turning out pretty cool. It has a really cool back glass. I figured we'd uh, videotape this a little bit so you could see what they're like if you haven't played one of these or you haven't seen one out on location or one that works. Check out how the, uh, you see the Concord Jet there. Of course, the Supersonic was based off of the Concord Jet. The Concord was a Supersonic, faster than the speed of sound, passenger jet if, uh, if you're a younger viewer, you may not have ever seen one actually in service, but these came out in 1976, and that thing was awesome. So this pinball machine was made in 1979, and it kind of ripped it off. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't pay uh, Air France or British Airways, I don't believe, uh, anything for using a uh, facsimile of the Concorde, but the Concorde was just a really cool jet, and everybody was had heard about it back then, and it was kind of the newest, hottest, most technologically advanced thing out in 1979 when this pinball machine was made. So they actually made a pinball machine about the jet. But Bally had a habit there for a little while where they would just the playfields. This playfield actually was just one of their electromechanical games that came out in 1976. And it had kind of an airplane theme to it, the layout of it. Um, and so the rumor is, is that they got the, the uh, license to make a Star Trek pinball machine. Now this would have been based on the original television show and like the first Star Trek movie. So they started designing this thing. And see how it says ST right there? Well, the rumor, what people say is that Originally, it just had the S and the T, and that stood for Star Trek, but who knows. But, uh, you can see how the, they call that a bonus ladder. You can see how it is now on the finished game. But apparently, according to the designer, at one point in time, they turned the, the, the artistic design f from Star Trek over to Supersonic. So who knows if that T actually is left over from the Star Trek design or not, but um, but it had a really awesome back glass, so figured I'd show some of that. But I like how they made the they made the jet have wings. If you look close you can see like the bird wings on it. Pretty cool. And there's the Statue of Liberty. And then on this side you've got Big Ben in London and the Eiffel Tower in Paris. There were, the Concorde was made, um, I think the only two, I may have this wrong, but I believe the only two companies that actually bought Concorde planes, or the only two countries that actually bought Concorde planes were England and Paris. And the reason for that, the United States actually didn't buy them. The reason for that was because when the thing went supersonic, it could actually fly two times the speed of sound. So the whole thing was, if you flew from like London to New York, it would take eight hours on a regular jet. But on the Concorde, three and a half hours. And the thing was just an unbelievable design. Like the, uh, the plane actually would heat up. It was going so fast, it would heat up as it flew. And by the time it landed, it would be so hot, like the skin on the outside of the plane, that the plane actually expanded almost a foot in the air. Now I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Look it up. It was just a really, uh, it's amazing that they were able to design it and make it work, you know, where you could take off and land. And a cool, another cool thing about the Concorde was, and I know we're talking about a pinball machine, but hey, it is the Concorde pinball machine. So uh, whenever it flew, it had a straight nose like that. 
for aerodynamics. But whenever it landed, it tucked the nose down like that so that the pilots could see the runway. So anyway, my point is, in 1979, this thing was cool. I mean, the, nothing was cooler than a Concorde jet. So they couldn't call it Concorde because that was trademark, so they called it Supersonic. And had that awesome back glass. Probably one of Bally's best back glasses. And so if you look at the cabinet art, it's also got the plane on the side with the nose tucked down. And then just a little simple art on the side. These early pinball machines like this, they, uh, they they painted them with stencils. So these things would come down the, the assembly line and they would just hold up a big piece of you know, particle board or whatever, a big stencil, hold it to the side and spray paint it. And they'd put on the, uh, the red and then do another one blue. And then that was it and they had their design. I'll bet they could knock out the whole cabinet probably in 45 seconds. But it kind of gives it that vintage look, you know, I mean, that's how the pinballs looked in the 70s. And the ones before it, too, you know, the, the machines from the 50s and 60s were painted like that, too. Bally had a really cool coin door on their games. It's just all metal. Just has a neat look. You can change these little signs out to make it different prices. And the start button is right there. It's kind of blends in with the door just a cool design and then they had these really cool ball shooters too that's got a point on it and in 1979 these were I think the first solid state pinball machines you can tell solid state by because it's digital like it's got the the uh, digital displays on the back glass it's run off of PC uh, PCB boards the first solid state games I think came out in 1977 and Bally and Williams kind of got the jump on Gottlieb in the 60s Gottlieb was the king of pinballs you know like all the Gottlieb's were awesome the Bally's and the Williams were awesome too but Gottlieb was kind of late to the party on the uh, the digital ones they didn't really want to switch over so but this is one of the first you know maybe 15 or 20 titles that Bally made after they went digital and this thing sold about 10 thousand units which is if one sold that that many today it would just be like the biggest hit of the last last 15 years but back then pinball sold a lot better but 10,000 was still pretty good even for 1979 pinball was a lot a lot more popular back then so anyway I'll show you a little bit of the play field at the bonus ladder we were talking about now this game is not in mint condition we always tell people we rarely get collector quality games. This is a game that's been played a lot. It's been out on location. Thousands of people have played this thing. You can see on the side. That's how the paint's just completely worn down to the wood around the uh, flipper buttons. That's because tons and tons and tons of people have had their hands resting there while they hit the flipper button. So, and just to give you an idea of the number of people that have played this thing. So anyway, so on the play field you're going to see some imperfections and some spots that the art's missing or there's problems going on, but we're still working on it a little bit, but we've about got it finished here. The plastics were always really cool on these. So you've got the, I guess the pilot and the, I guess they would be called stewardesses back then, right? And then here's a lady and her kid looking out the window with a, one of the flight attendants looking on. And here's a business gentleman on his supersonic flight overseas. And so here on the right side you've got the Eiffel Tower. Again, they're paying respect to Paris because Air France built these. Oh, and I was going to say, the reason that a lot of the companies or the countries didn't buy these, believe it or not, was because whenever the whenever the plane went supersonic, 
there was a sonic boom and there was a big discussion back then about you know whether or not that was noise pollution or whether or not that was even that was dangerous you know and so uh, the United States decided not to go with the supersonic planes so up here you've got one of the pilots and over here you've got the co-pilot what's he doing getting some coffee from one of the flight attendants I'll show you a little more of the you can see that see that line on the top a lot of these old EMs have that that's because every time you shoot the ball it goes across that same line they call that the ball track so it, eventually it just wears the wood out and it'll wear through the paint and the clear coat and everything So anyway, that's what the play field looks like. Now, on a pinball machine, you can just walk up and start playing it. But they're a lot more fun if you actually look at the rules first. So the rules are right here. So, instructions. Making one, two, three, four, five. So what they're talking about is up here, one, four, two, five, three. Those numbers on the top rollovers. Oh. Making one, two, three, four, five. So you make all five of them. The first time you do that, it lights the center star rollover buttons to advance the bonus. So the first time you do it, it lights up these. See how those five are coming on in the attract mode? So as you go through, so if you if you roll over one, that light goes out, and this light down here comes on. So that's what happens the first time. To advance the bonus. The bonus is this ladder here. You collect this at the end of each ball. Whenever your ball drains, you get whatever that's lit up to. So the first time you do that, it advanced, advances the bonus. Second time, it lights jet stream rollover buttons to advance the bonus. So the jet stream rollover bonus, check this out. Jet stream, all buttons score 1,000 when they're lit. And lit buttons advance bonus. So if you make that shot, through this ball gate here you fall down through here and you roll over all these and if they're lit up you get a thousand points for each one that's lit up plus it advances the bonus still up through here all right and then third time that you do it so they're talking about the rollovers at the top third time lights one through five lanes and targets for three thousand points and out lanes for special so the third time you do it it's going to light all those up right and uh, all of those are going to be worth 3,000 points each and the out lanes are going to that special lights going to come on so the special special wind lit is on both sides so the special you could change it so like on the software inside you could make the special a uh, free ball by changing a dip switch on one of the boards in the back or you could make the special a free game something like that Okay, fourth time you light all those, making one, two, three, four, five. Fourth time and each additional time scores the special. So whatever the special is, you just automatically score it whenever you get all five. And lights the center star and jet stream 1,000 point lights. So all these little rollovers are worth 100 points, but they're worth 1,000 whenever that light's lit up. And you roll over them all the time because the ball, you know, there are whenever you hit it with the flippers they go over those a lot all right ball through the out lane when lit for special scores one replay so what that means is this this particular cabinet is set up so that if you make that when the special lights lit up you get a free game spinner lights when ball return gate is open so over here on the side you've got this gate so you know if your ball goes out this right lane you get a thousand points for that and then the ball drains and you lose your ball right but if that gate is open when the ball goes out you get a thousand points and then the ball lands over here where you can shoot it again so you don't lose your ball so gate is open when lit so it says ball through out lane 
when lit for special, I mean, it says spinner lights when ball return gate is open. So whenever that gate opens up, this spinner here is usually worth 100 points every time it spins around. But it's worth 1,000 points if it's lit up. So if that gate opens up, the spinner will be worth 1,000 points. Maximum one extra ball per ball in play. So it'll just, it'll light up this. Same player shoots again. It won't start adding or subtracting balls over here. There's this ball in play. If you're on three, it won't go down to two and then let you play three again. It'll just light that light up. So when you lose your ball, you get the ball over again. So you can only do that once per ball because they don't have any other way of counting it. And the tilt penalty is the ball in play. So what that means is if you shake the game too much, it'll tilt it. And that little tilt light will come on in the back glass there tilt and so if it does you'll lose that ball there's a setting in the game where you can make it where they lose their whole game right that'd be horrible so those are the rules what I'll do is I'll go get the tripod and I'll play a couple games just to knock the ball around a little bit I am not a great pinball player and it's kind of hard to uh, video a pinball machine anyway but uh, we'll try it see what we do be back in a minute all right, we are back with the tripod. I put the glass on, so it's giving you a little bit of a glare. Um, but you kind of have to do that because it, whenever you're, if you're playing a game without the glass on it, you can hear all the mechanisms making noise, and it's just it's almost scary sound. It sounds like something's breaking or something. But so they just don't play right without the glass on it, in my opinion. But uh, so you'll have to watch the ball through the glass I guess but the uh, one thing about it too it's it's really hard to film a pinball machine playing because the way the cabinets set up it's just hard to get a good shot of it like as you can see right now you can't see the whole entire play field you can see most of it um, but you can't see the scores on the back glass and stuff like that but hey that's the best I can do so <laughs> I'll tell you at the end of the ball what the score is Believe me, it won't be much. So if you if you weren't paying too much attention to the rules, real simple. You're just trying to make one through five as much as possible. The more you do, the more points you get, and you're just trying to get a ton of points. So here we go. This is one of Bally's early games, so the sound effects, there's not much going on. It's just their, their simplest soundboard, their very first one. So um, you'll hear a little bit of sound effects, but no music or anything like that. So I'm getting one. You can see how it lit up in the middle. Oh. So basically I need to get back up to the top as much as I can or hit these targets on the right because I'm trying to score one through five as much as I can. down the middle and you see it counted down twice that was because over here my bonus multiplier value the two times was lit up so it counted down my bonus twice so right now my score is 23,710 now if you were playing this back in the day your goal would be you're trying to win a free game and this oh, the card says on this one one replay for each score of 120,000 points so you're trying to get that I've got it set up where it's three balls. Sometimes you get three balls or five balls, just depending on what the card said. But this is a three-ball game, so here we go. And you can see it kept my one and four that I'd already lit up. Oh! So there's the two. A little spinner action. So I got my three on the side there by hitting that side target. Now I just need the five. And you can see my bonus climbed up to 10,000 and stayed there. And now I got 1,000 at the bottom, so I'm at 11,000. Oh, man. And I've got the two times, so it's going to do it twice. All right. So on ball two, now my total is up to 63,130. Ah, I missed it. 
If I can get this little one here on the right, it'll do it too. <laughs> Almost. Nope. There we go. All right, so I got it the first time. It says, first time it lights the center star rollover buttons to advance the, advance the bonus. So you see how all five of them's lit. So the second time you get all five, it lights the jet stream. So now each time I do it, it's going to light those, uh, these ones over here on the left, that long row there. So that every time I go through there, it gives me more points. So it should light the one on the left. There's a three, and you can see it lit up the one, the three on the left. Oh. I got the five, that's cool. There's the two. We're doing pretty good. So now my bonus is up. I get three times whatever the bonus is. I'm probably going to win a free game here, which is cool. Not quite as cool when it's on free play, though. <laughs> There we go. So it should count down three times. All right. You heard it, right? <laughs> All right. So my score ended up being, if I can get it there. 249,000, no wait, that was the high score, 165,670. Somebody else got 249,000 as the high score to date. And the replay was at 120, so that loud crack you heard, that's called a knocker, if you're not familiar with these older pinball machines. The new ones just make a noise, but the old ones, they actually had a, a coil in them that slaps the side of the cabinet really hard, so everybody in the arcade would know that you are the king of that pinball machine. You actually won a free game from it. So anyway, I just figured we'd videotape that a little bit and show you what a Bally Supersonic from 1979 was like. If you want to see the games that we have available, by the time you see this video, this one may already be sold. But if you want to see the games we have available, we don't have too many pinball machines, but we've got a lot of arcade games. Um, and we do get pinball machines. You can see them all at lionsarcade.com or stop by our shop. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, we're open every day except Sunday. Just stop in and see what we've got in. We've got about 50, 60 games usually at all times for sale. Um, and this one looks like, after we test it a little bit more, will be the next one. So stop in, subscribe to our channel. We'll be putting up tons of videos like this. Every time we get a game that we think would make an interesting video, we'll film it. So. There you go, Bally Supersonic 1979, really cool game for its age, I like it.